How you doing, everybody? It's me, Waddles. And hey, 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 hold up, hold up. What is Blood doing? <laughs> Posing in front of the update sign. Nice. Today, my friend, in honor of some big 1.20 updates we haven't talked about, in honor of the resolution of the Trail Ruins mystery we've been talking about, and in honor of probably the final big 1.20 preview, let's let's talk all about it. Smash like if you're hyped for my new big series beginning soon, and let's do this. There's only one way we could begin, and today it's on that toasty, cozy, brand new menu screen. Ooh, look at it, it's been updated for 1.20, I'll cherry blossomified and... Oh, well, we're in the preview, so I guess the panorama never changes. Speaking of Minecraft preview, though, yellow text, and speaking of yellow text, splash text, they were added in Java Snapshot a couple weeks ago, never talked about it, and oh boy, you bet they've been added inside of this preview. Every single splash text relates to something new in Minecraft 1.20. It's beautiful. Inside of this update, when creating a world, truly, you've got more options than you ever had before. Slide into experimental settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and boom! A brand new experimental toggle. Hey, 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 hold up, hold up, though. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Before we talk about that one, let's talk about what has kind of become the biggest 1.20 controversy. Oh no. Nah, lads, how far we've come. Instead of a controversy involving a cancelled biome, a cancelled lava, cancelled anything like that, it's just a small thing, relatively small, involving something on the death screen. In last week's preview, a big change was made to the death screen. See that top corner, show coordinates? Well, if it had that big red button with show coordinates shown, they would have shown. And now they don't. You see, in my opinion here, this one is kind of silly, but at the same time, I totally get it. After the change that was made in last week's preview, the first thing that I saw on Twitter all over the community, what it was comments, concerns, words of condolence for this for second item right here. The recovery compass, oh, is so blue, so icy, so sweet, and kind of so useless after that change. Like, I get it. See, of course, as any good Minecraft professional would know, the point of the recovery compass is to lead you back to where you... Why did I take damage from that? That was weird. Uh, let's go ahead and try that one more. Yeah, there we go. The point of the recovery compass is to point you back to where you last died, and if you have coordinates shown, then you kind of just don't even need the recovery compass. It's pointless. And of course, with the recovery compass being invalidated, how about the echo shard? Our good friend the echo shard is also kind of invalidated. It becomes basically pointless. So I get it totally. The showing coordinates on the death screen makes this recovery compass item a little bit less useful. But I think this is a great opportunity for a new game mode differentiation. See, I think the way that it should be done is when you're on peaceful and easy difficulty, coordinates are shown on death screen. Normal? Eh, maybe. But hard mode? No way. Absolutely not. I mean, after all, departing this world, depending on how it happened, can already be frustrating enough. Is it that big of a deal to have the quartz? What do you think? Friends, what if I told you that the newest preview? Well, it actually has a secret command. It's called input permission. On the changelog of the newest Minecraft preview, this command just like doesn't exist. They didn't mention it at all. When it comes to the format of this new input permission command, here you go. You've got query, you've got set. Then you have targets, then you have the permission that you're going to enable, and then the state, finally, that you're going to enable as well. Or, or I guess disable. If we go ahead and begin to fill this command out, eventually we'll get to movement or camera. Basically, this new command, it goes hand in hand with that other new amazing command that we'll talk about later. Tucked inside of Minecraft Preview 1.20.0.22, we've got a lot here, but some of the stuff is pretty familiar. Look at this beautiful brand new music disc. We talked all about it in the Snapshot Showcase video. It sounds so good, the aesthetics are on point, and it's just amazing. I absolutely love how they're making you get this thing. You go to the Trail of Ruins, you do a little bit of excavation, and hopefully, if you're lucky, oh, you, you find us, you can vibe out. It's wonderful. Also included in this preview are the brand new block phases for the two skulk sensors that we have in the game. The normal one, the calibrated one. Functionally, these skulk sensors are now identical to how they are on Java editions. So, I'm willing to bet if you have a skull contraption you've seen somebody build on Java, it should probably work on Bedrock too. Another small attention to detail change that does definitely exist here is the sensor lighting up too. I never realized the old fashioned one lit up too though. Oh, that's interesting. I guess the final big parody difference that is left here when it comes to this brand new amethyst sensor is the aesthetics of the thing. Last time we talked about it, I said the bedrock one was better, but I lied. 
the Java one is so much better now. Like over on Minecraft Java, the icon of this item is different. I think it looks a whole lot better. And then, of course, placed down into the world, that amethyst is like a little bit wider and shorter. I think it looks so much better on Java. Ooh. Ooh, whoops. Shouldn't have done that one. <laughs> In this preview, we also have those brand new ambient songs. But if we're more on things that we've already talked about, check out this week's snapshot video after this one. Lads, the day that we've been waiting for is finally here. The Trail Ruins mystery has come to a conclusion. When it comes to the Trail Ruins and which version is the right version of the Ruins, we've got an answer. So taking a look at this forest right here, this seems like a pretty average forest. Nothing is really sticking out until... Oh, wait a second. What is that? Well, 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 what do I spy with my little eye right there? Hmm. A Trail Ruins. This is a big day, lads, because for the very first time since their implementation on Bedrock over a month ago, the Trail Ruin structure is actually buried now. Sure, it still does look like maybe a little bit more of the Trail Ruin structure pops out over on Bedrock here, but for the most part, from every structure that I've seen, they're like completely buried now. Now, when it comes to the loot table and checking out actually finding cool things in the Trail Ruins, well, that's actually been made the same as Java as well. It's a change from a couple weeks ago that we've only really talked about a little bit, but basically the Trail Ruins has two loot tables now. We have the common loot table, and then we have the rare loot table. For the most part, if you're looking for the rare loot, it's going to be deeper in the structure. The common loot, on the other hand, that for the most part consists of a bunch of junk, is found all over the structure, high and low. The only structure that archaeology takes place at in the entire game that has these two loot tables is going to be the Trail Ruin structure because there is so much archaeology that takes place here. Another change that's gone down this week over at the Trail Ruin structure has to do with what's inside of the Trail Ruins. Or is it? If you find yourself in the middle of a big dig over at your local Trail Ruins, you will no longer find any sand inside of the structure. Instead, inside of the structure, we're looking at a whole lot more gravel and dirt, as well as suspicious gravel. That looks so weird. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now, when it comes to the individual structures that make up this big structure, well, my friend, those have been updated as well. As far as I can tell, every individual component of the structure over on Bedrock is exactly the same as it is on Java. There's no, like, different ones or anything like that. Now, as far as the shape of the structure goes when this thing generates, it also seems to be basically the same as Java Edition. Of course, you're going to have some variation here. There are a lot of different components of the structure, but basically, we start with a tower, and then in one direction coming out from that tower, we get a road pretty consistently. If you're planning on excavating this structure in survival, well, for the most part, it should be mainly buried in dirt and gravel. You should be able to pull most of it off with just a shovel. However, one big difference that I am noticing over on Bedrock a little bit more from the couple excavations that I've actually done, uh, it does seem like some of the other stones mix in a little bit more here, like granite kind of cutting in here and cutting off the structure a little bit. Next up for us today, it's over to the warm ocean because finally, at long last, they've actually done it. It took them a little while, but inside of the ocean, at the ruins, we actually have a brand new item. Bring your brush, head over to your local ocean, and get to digging. Hopefully, you're lucky here. It's, the odds are not the greatest, but if you're lucky, inside of the ocean ruined dig sites. Hey, let's see if I can get lucky here. Hey, doesn't look like it. If you're at least a little bit luckier than me, then inside of the warm ocean ruins at long last, that beautiful snipper egg in all of its strange-looking glory. If you remember, this was something we began speculation on in this video, then continued it in this one. It didn't seem like the sniffer egg was actually possible to get in survival, and that was definitely the case. Now, speaking of the sniffer egg, when you get one and you place it down and nothing happens, but if you place it down on moss right here, you get the green particles. These green particles are basically meant to be a built-into-the-game hint that this egg is going to do something a little bit different on moss blocks. Give that egg a little bit of warm, tender love and time, and boom, a sniffer will drop out of that thing. And speaking of the sniffer, it could be tempted now. Before this week's preview, when you resurrected this dinosaur species, there was no way to actually lead it around your world without, like, well, a lead or something. You're now able to lead the sniffer around your world with torch flower seeds, just like you can breathe the sniffer around your world with torch flower seeds. If you try and use this pitcher pod plant, nothing happens till it doesn't really care about it. Oh boy, oh boy, is that time of the week again. The pitcher plant, hmm, can we still do it? Ah, uh, yes we can. Oh, it's beautiful. And even better with this pitcher plant, look at what has come over to this version. When you put one inside of this thing, you get two dyes. So not only can you bone meal it, like insanely crazy, Java, please, please. But you can also turn one of these things into two dye just like that. Now, how about this torch flower? Has the functionality changed here? No, it has not. When you bone meal this thing, you just get those other random flowers. That is a little bit strange, don't you think? 
After all, with all of the other flowers in the game, I bone meal this thing, I get more of those things. And this thing, I get more of those things. Hmm, that's weird. Also, I guess maybe I'm blind or something, because I can't really see this change. But apparently the texture of this thing was changed this week too. Does it look different to you? Now at this point in the development cycle, with advancements, music, even a brand new menu set ready to go, it looks like 1.20 is getting very, very close here. It will not surprise me if this drops next month. But, with this update getting close, it makes us wonder about this pixelated image that I'm still blurring for legal reasons. What is... what has happened to it? Will we still get this third plan? <sighs> with every week that passes, it seems more and more unlikely. At this point, unless it changes next week or something, it almost looks like this cool blue plant might not make it to the game in 1.20. But there is still hope. With the Minecraft devs changing Java's development cycle and putting more focus on minor updates as well, there is always the chance that this flower comes to Java in like 1.20.1. And when it makes it to Java in that update, it would definitely make it a bedrock probably in that update too. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. Ah, lads, so here we are, we've made it. To the very end of this video, two final things. The first one, we talked all about in yesterday's video. Check it out if you haven't yet, but slash camera, oh boy, it was meant to come out in June, but they moved a release ahead, maybe because it leaked or something. Slash camera, me, set, example, free, run the command, and boom. Just like that, this camera has been set free from me. Now, where in the world is me? Ooh, that's a good question. I took a little bit of damage. <laughs> To fix this little problem, no big deal, slash camera, me, clear, and all of a sudden I'm back to me. Let's go ahead and run it one more time, I was stuck in a hole, and this time I'm gonna walk forward, or at least I think it's forward, hey, 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 look at it, it's me, I can fly up to the camera, and yeah, just like that, I've moved the camera around, and all of a sudden, I'm talking to you, at the camera here, <laughs> this is insane, like, welcome to the future, guys, this is crazy, but what I just showed you there is only the start of it, that's like basically nothing. Check out this video right here. The camera is now moving, following the player at a set distance while the player runs through the swamp. This is replay, my baby. Here's another really cool example of what you can do with the camera. It's panning and scrolling through this jail right here. As you can see here in this video as well, the camera is panning around and moving around and then boom, look at that. It just locked into the player. That's the beginning of your map right there. Maybe that's a small cutscene inside of your world. I don't know, but it's so cool. Now all those are great and all, but look, I think this was the most cool one that I saw. With the help of this camera command, <laughs> it's like a 2D platformer game in Minecraft, it's like Mario or something. Look at this thing. This is crazy. This camera functionality, the capabilities with this command, it's in an early version right now. It's going to be amazing to see what the devs do with this thing long term. I think this is a literal game changer for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. This stuff is wild. But finally today, not really related to the camera thing, but over to Smokey Sack on Twitter. In the newest Minecraft preview, there are some new exciting things. New loading screen messages. So in this screen right here are the new tips you're gonna see in game when you're loading something on Bedrock. They all relate to the 1.20 update. Brand new recipe command, likely related to toasts, coming very, very soon as well. And then we got some lines of codes that are seemingly in here to combat piracy. So lads, that just about does it for today. Minecraft 1.20's actual final feature, trail rune parody, music, all that great stuff. It's here now. A beautiful brand new camera command that I am oh so jealous of. You got that too. That's gonna do it for Minecraft Preview 1.20.0.22. If you like this video, smash like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. You're the best and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye everyone.